In this video, I'll talk to you about the lump sum contracts and what is the definition of a lump sum contract and what is the limitations of the scope of work and the variations and all of this starting right now. So what is a lump sum contract? The lump sum contract is a construction agreement where the contractor agrees to construct the project for a specific fixed predetermined amount, which means that the contractor will take, for example, X amount to execute this project. But of course, this is not unlimited. It's not like the client can ask the contractor to keep doing many things that are not there in his contract. So actually, this lump sum contract, even though it's a fixed price to execute the projects, there are some limitations or there are some documents that will limit the scope of work of the contractor to a certain extent. So what is the limit of lump sum contract? Actually, the scope of work of the lump sum contract will be limited to the contract documents, such as what? For example, the conditions of contract and the specifications, the drawings and the BOQ. So these documents together, they make the contract. And the price of the contract is to execute this project as per what is written or what is mentioned in these documents. So these documents will limit and define the scope of the contractor in the lump sum contract. So when to use lump sum contracts? Actually, lump sum contracts should be used when the scope of work is very much well defined. Why? Because if the scope is well defined, we have everything. We have the specifications, we have the drawings, we have the BOQ, we have everything. Then the contractor in that case can make a very accurate cost analysis and he can put his margins and everything and submit his lump sum price for the project. So in order to have a lump sum contract, first of all, the scope must be very well defined and the majority of the project scope should be there produced and ready. And quickly, if we are meeting for the first time, I am Ahmad Adel and you are watching Cost Engineering Professional. And here I help you develop the required skills and enhance your knowledge to elevate your cost engineering career. So if this is what you want, you can quickly subscribe. Now, another very good question, which is what if the contract documents contradicting one another? For example, let's say that the specifications of the project say something and the drawings say something else. What happens in this case? Actually, in the lump sum contract or in any other contract, there will be something that is called the priority of documents. And what does that mean? It means that each of the documents of the contract will have a certain priority and based on that priority, whatever information is mentioned in that contract will take precedence. And I'll explain that with an example. For example, let's say that a main contractor awarded a subcontract agreement of full ceiling to a full ceiling subcontractor, and this agreement is lump sum. So in that case, for example, let's say that the priority of documents say that the first document or the document that has the biggest priority is the LOA or the letter of award, or let's say the conditions of contract, the agreement itself. Then the second priority document is the specifications. And the third priority document is the drawing and the fourth one is the BOQ. That means if something is mentioned in the drawings, for example, but it is not mentioned in the BOQ, which means not included in the subcontractor price, in that case, if the contract is lump sum, and since the drawings are part of the contract, because as we said, the drawings and the specifications and the BOQ and the conditions of contract, all of these are part of the contract, which is lump sum. So if something is there in the drawings, but it is not in the BOQ, and the priority of the document says that the drawings has more priority than the BOQ, then it means that this additional thing is in his scope. It's included in the lump sum project because the drawings has bigger priority or more priority than the BOQ, and the item is mentioned there in the drawings. So that means that the contractor has to execute this item because it is there in the drawing and his contract is lump sum even though this item is not available in the BOQ. And for example, since we took the full ceiling as an example, usually the specifications will say that wherever access is required for the MEP services, the subcontractor or the contractor has to provide access panel, for example. So let's say that the drawings doesn't show any access panels, but still it is mentioned clearly in the specifications that access panels has to be provided wherever required for the MEP. And since this is mentioned in the specifications, which has bigger priority than the drawings and the BOQ, so the access panels are not there in the BOQ, they are not there in the drawings, but they are there in the specifications. So that means that it is still, this thing is part of the lump sum contract and this contractor has to execute 
this item. And this point will take us to the next point, which is the variations. So when do we have a variation? You will have a variation when something is required, but this thing is not there in the drawings and it is not there in the BOQ, it is not there in the specifications, and it is not there in the conditions of contract. That means that this required thing is not there in the contract at all, and it is not there in any document of the contract, which means that this item shouldn't be executed. So let's have an example. For example, if the civil defense told you that I need a handrail at the entrance of a building, for example. So we will look in the BOQ, we will not find any handrails, for example, at the entrance of the building. Then when you go to the drawings, this handrail is also not there. And when you go to the specifications, it didn't say anything that a handrail should be there, like in the entrance of the building or something. And then we will go to the last point, which is the conditions of contract. What is written in the contract? If it is written that the contractor has to comply with the authority regulations, for example, then this means that this item is included in his contract. As per his contract, which is lump sum, he has to comply with the authority requirements. So since this is an authority requirement and his contract say that he has to comply with such requirement, then this is part of his contract and he has to do it. But if the conditions of contract were silent, they didn't mention anything about the authorities, then in that case, this required thing should be considered as a variation. It should be paid additional because it is not part of the contract. And in this video here, I explain the variations in more details. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel. And you can also support Cost Engineering Professional by joining the channel memberships. And I'll see you in the next video.